Gambling, winning and losing streaks, and the standard deviation. Part 4. Blackjack card counting. In Part 1, we saw how the deviation in the expected return changes with the length of play. In Part 2, we saw how this applies to games where the house has an advantage. And in Part 3, we looked at a bet with a highly uneven payoff. Here is the expectation table for a blackjack card counter. The overall player edge is about 0.6% for a skilled card counter playing with typical Las Vegas game rules and good playing conditions. This table is only a rough approximation of actual card counting play for a number of reasons. First of all, blackjack isn't an even payoff game. The blackjack hand pays 1.5 to 1, and splitting pairs or doubling down increases your risk relative to your initial bet, which increases the standard deviation. Furthermore, the player advantage is not a fixed 0.6%, but varies as the cards are dealt out and the remaining composition of the deck changes. The card counter bets more when the deck is favorable and bets less or quits playing when it's unfavorable. So the house edge and bet sizes are constantly changing. Nevertheless, this approximate model gives you some idea of what can happen in card counting sessions where you have an overall tiny advantage. The model is an even payoff game with a constant player edge of 0.6%. As you can see, the game is similar to a coin flip game in that the unlucky and lucky results are closely centered on the average final result, especially for the shorter sessions. After 400 bets, about half a day of blackjack play, the chance of being ahead is still just a little better than 50%, and losses can be significant. Even after a few days of play, 2,500 bets, winning is by no means assured there's still a one-third chance of ending up losing. And this is for expert play under perfect conditions, without player mistakes, and without interference from casino management. And now I have a few words for casino managers and pit bosses. The rest of you can leave. Okay, for casino managers, the table shows why it's impossible to detect card counters by observing whether they win. They have big winning and losing streaks, just like the other players. You need to look at some other things which I've described in a separate video. You might see a card counter who has been playing for a while and say, my God, this card counter just cheated us out of $220. But you'll be wrong. First of all, card counting is not cheating, it is simply using skill. Furthermore, the customer may have won $220, but only a tiny bit of the gain was the result of card counting. The rest was just a moderate run of good luck. The same player could just as easily lose $180 on the next session. What you care about is this, the long-term gain from card counting. A highly skilled card counter can win maybe two bets per 400 original bets in the long run, about the same as what a good non-counting customer loses, betting similar amounts of money. When you comp a good customer, you don't care whether he's winning or losing. You just look at how much he's betting and how long he's been playing. You know that he'll lose a certain percentage in the long run, and you comp a portion of that back to him. It's the same principle for the card counter. In deciding whether to kick him out, consider the amount you might be saving, two bets per 400 hands, versus the cost in bad publicity and ill will, as the other customers see it as the greedy casino being a poor sport, not letting someone play just because he's good at it. If you're really losing serious money in the long run, then by all means you should ban the card counter. Otherwise, there are better countermeasures you can take.